All righty, we'll go ahead and get started. Sorry, I was trying to stay in the zone, uh, my happy zone. <laughs> so music is one of my to go to whenever I need to feel good and if things are hitting me from every direction, I, I go to music. Uh, frequency is great, but sometimes I like to hear some of my favorite songs. So welcome everybody. Today is gonna to be an exciting uh, show for you. Um, one of the things is that uh, I think when you leave every show, uh, every interaction, every co-creation, I want you to leave with something that is self-empowering. Okay? As I've always said, it begins and ends with you. And as always, I'm gonna say it again, it begins and ends with you. Everything is a point of contact. All the ideas, all of the words, all of the saying, all of the systems and technology and gurus, everything out there, every person out there is a point of contact for you because you need something in order to make the next step. But it begins and ends with you. So I'm excited today because today I want to go through the book that I wrote. And the book is not just in a book. This book is infused with certain wisdom that I have come to understand as the common denominator. Right? And so today I will be going over what that common denominator looks like and how we can all tap into it. And that's what bridge all of us together because it's part of the creative process. You can be chasing everything out there and not understand anything truly at its core, and you just find yourself lost. And this is important that you have a, a, a strong foundation. And today we're going to be talking about how to set that strong foundation so you can manifest. And so I want to share a testimony with you guys. So I practice these things. It's not just I'm coming out here and I'm sharing ideas with you, and it's not actionable wisdom to me. So uh, I've been practicing the mindful activities. And one of the things I was doing here recently was uh, practicing how to hold the universe or divinity or God accountable. Right? Because if I'm held accountable, I should be able to reciprocate the process because it's a two-way relationship. So I've been working on how to hold expectations in my creative process and and it's a phenomenal phenomenal manifestation that started taking place i'll give you one quick example here um i've been running and i'll go over those frequencies that i've been running here uh at the end I'm running some abundance and some um luck and also shift um financial uh, opportunities and different things like that you know you know everybody is trying to look for the best opportunity here but one of the things is I was talking to a colleague, I wrote the book and I sent the book out and you know, I wanted to put a value on the book because I wanted people to have something that they believe has value. Whenever I've done things, which I've spent most of my life doing for free, whether it's health and wellness and education, most of the stuff I've poured out into the world that is very powerful, very transformative, more impactful than most of the stuff out there that people pay thousands and millions of dollars for. Um, you know, Putting it out there freely, people don't have appreciation for it. Somehow the this thing is worthless and they don't take it serious. So I put a I put some value on this and it was a simple value, it's $25. Um, this is worth a lot more than that, but I put the value on it because some of the colleagues told me, put some value of $25 on it. But people weren't purchasing this the, the audio. So I said, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it away free, right? But I'm going to hold the universe. I'm going to hold God accountable to pay it back. You know, so I did that, right? And that's something you can do. Everything that you do requires an equal and opposite reaction. All your compassion, all your love, all your commitment, all your giving, you have to set the expectations of how, you know, that you want that back. A lot of times you want it from a person, place, or thing, and you don't get that. And that is where we fall short. So now we want to hold the universe, God, source, whatever you define that to be that is greater than you accountable by saying, I'm going to do these things, but I'm going to be, this is my value to doing these things. And this is my, these are my expectation. So when I did that, when I released the book, <laughs> something interesting happened. I went to my mail. I opened my mail. There was a cancellation of $40,000 debt that I had. So it's a, it's a student loan debt, zero out. Didn't apply for it. Don't know how it happened. Couldn't tell you how it happened. Debt, right? But what was interesting is that when I set the expectations of the value of what I'm giving out, the value comes back and it, it begins to eliminate some of those things, those frustrations. So some of you might be struggling with basic debt, maybe struggling with, you know, hospital debt, medical debt. It could be, you know, family situations. So continue giving, continue loving. Continue allowing these, this tool and other tools to support you in doing that. Because once you continue to do that, 
you're living your, your, your purpose. And when you're living your purpose, there must be an equal and opposite response to that. Don't look at the people around you because sometimes the people around you are going through worse than you. Look to the higher self, look to your higher self and look to God, look to source to be the one that holds that, that holds that debt uh, uh, to be accountable for. You know? And so that is just one testimonial. Another testimonial is I've always been looking for, you know, my whole life I've been searching, even from the time I was a child, what is that to, what is it like to feel unconditional love and acceptance, non-judgmental love? And we out there looking for that. We're looking for that through people, places, and things. And sometimes we don't find it. You know, no matter how hard we look, we look to the people closest to us, and we don't see that unconditional love. We feel judgments. We feel condemnations. We feel all these different things because everybody is trying to see you in their image, right? Or as an the, the best version of themselves. So they're judging you and they're doing all these different uh, distortions towards you. And so... I've been doing the same thing. I say, I want unconditional love. I deserve unconditional love. I look at myself, why not? You know, if it's out there, I want to feel that. And I hadn't felt that for a long time. And what ended up happening, I have a one-year-old daughter and who is the, uh, the inspiration for the book. Her name is Kayo. And Kayo began to show me that unconditional love. She wakes up in the morning, no matter how late she goes to bed, she wakes up in the morning, she greets me with a smile. It is the most amazing, beautiful smile. She wakes up and she's happy. And it is so amazing to get up in the morning before moving into a mindful state to see that happiness. And no matter what I took to bed last night, no matter what frustration I may have meditated on going into the, into the night, I woke up in the morning seeing this brightness, this light, this love, this unconditional love. And she is just loving. And sometimes we're looking for it all over the place and it's right there and you can receive the abundance. So I begin to just feed myself into that love of my daughter and just begin to accept that I'm deserving of that love like I received from my daughter so others can begin to reflect. But I begin to accept that. And that's the thing that we need to understand. If we don't operate from the place of ignorance, we think that we should be getting something or getting that or getting this person off from a particular pl uh, place. And a lot of times you already have everything you need and everything you want right around you where you are just not paying attention. And I think in, in, the, con in the context of religion, it says now faith is. It's not faith is coming or faith will be. It's faith is the substance of things hopeful like in the sight of. So that which you desire already exists around you is just a matter of you being becoming aware. And if you become aware, you begin to begin to synchronize with that, which is what we talk about. You begin to you know resonate and begin to vibrate at a different level that aligns best with you. So I'm not going to take much more time. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the book. If you haven't ordered the book at the end, I'm going to give you access to my website. You can go to the website and you can listen to the book for free. And I'm going to just charge it up to the universe. <laughs> I don't know. I might be increasing that price. I might say instead of $25, I might want $25,000, you know, for every listener. So go listen to the book for free, <laughs> right? It's free 99. There you go. And, and the universe is going to bring it back to me. All right. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for joining me. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to start with a slide. And, but before we do that, I'm going to play the, the first chapter of the book, get a chance to listen. If you got a pencil, pen, you can take it out. If not, you can just listen to the book. And then from there, we'll go ahead and break things down and see how we can apply the wisdom in this book into our everyday life so you can begin to manifest. Guys, we all don't have to chase money. I know we've become a society. Everybody wants abundance of money. Uh, there are a lot of wealthy people out there that are sickly. You know, there are a lot of web wealthy people out there that are dying. There are a lot of wealthy people out there that don't have emotional love and support and connection, right? So money doesn't bring you those things. Money is an instrument, it's a tool. Don't allow it to be your all be all. Let the love and the light that is around you be enough. And then the, the, the universe of God will begin to fulfill every aspect of the end result of what you're desiring. So I want to say that because our society will try to drive us to chase the dollar and it, it, we become distracted. We become distracted from, you know, we work a lot, we're working all these hours just to keep up with the bills or try to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, we're trying to keep up with this person. We're trying to, you know, have this car, have that house so that way we can keep up. Sometimes it's just okay just to be content and be happy where you are because you are valid. You are valuable. You are important. You are awesome. You are incredible. You are 
you cannot exist and God exists, you know, and, and, and God not exists versus each other. So your existence matters. You are infinitely important to the universe. Without you, the universe cannot exist. I want to say that. Without you, the universe cannot exist. You are the beingness of the totality knowingness. So be the best version of you every day and allow the things around you to support that endeavor. So let's go ahead and start the book. And then we're going to end up uh, at the end of the session with the, the actual frequency that I've been running in order to continue to train and develop my habit. Right? So let me start with the book first. Chapter one. Once upon a time in a lush forest filled with vibrant colors and the songs of chirping birds, there lived a young fox named Kyle. Kyle was born with a blank canvas, her mind untouched by the world's knowledge, ready to be painted with the hues of life's experiences. One day, while wandering through the forest, Kyle came across a wise old owl named Mr. G, who sat perched high on a branch, observing the world with keen eyes. Mr. G had lived for many years and had seen the forest change through countless seasons. His wisdom was revered by all the creatures in the forest. Mr. G, Kyle called out, I want to be wise like you. Teach me the secrets of the forest. Mr. G looked down at Kale with a gentle gaze. Wisdom begins with the recognition of one's ignorance, he replied. To become wise, you must first acknowledge what you do not know and be willing to learn. Kyle nodded eagerly, though she didn't quite understand. But I already know many things. I am fast, clever, and can find food anywhere. Knowing many things is different from understanding them deeply, Mr. G explained. Let me tell you a story. And so Mr. G began to share tales of the forest. In our forest, there is a stream that flows clear and pure, nurturing all the creatures that drink from it. Long ago, a group of animals believed they understood the stream's source. They built their homes close by, thinking they would have water forever. But one summer, the stream dried up and the animals faced a great thirst. They had never explored where the stream truly came from or how it was fed by underground springs and rain. They mistook their initial impressions for complete truths and suffered because of it. Kyle listened, beginning to see the lesson. So to be wise, I must explore and understand the world more deeply? Exactly, Mr. G hooted. Ignorance is not a flaw, but an opportunity. Embrace it as the start of your journey towards wisdom. Seek out new experiences, ask questions, and learn from the world around you. Inspired by Mr. G's words, Kyle decided to embark on a journey through the forest. She ventured into unknown parts, met different animals, and learned about their ways of life. She questioned what she saw and sought to understand the deeper truths behind her observations. Kyle's journey took her to a clearing where she met a family of deer who taught her about the importance of community and support. They shared stories of how they navigated the forest's challenges together, always looking out for one another. This taught Kyle about the power of societal influence and the importance of a supportive community. As Kyle continued her travels, she came across a group of squirrels who were busy gathering acorns. They explained that their elders had always emphasized the importance of preparation and foresight. Kyle learned that their education focused not just on what to think, but on how to think critically and creatively, encouraging curiosity and problem solving. One day, Kyle stumbled upon a majestic tree with a hollow trunk where an old tortoise named Terence resided. Terence spoke of the pressures he faced from his family to follow a certain path, but he found true happiness in pursuing his passion for storytelling. From Terence, Kyle learned to embrace her unique talents and follow her true calling rather than succumbing to societal expectations. Through her journey, Kyle began to transform her ignorance into wisdom. She learned that the trees communicated through their roots, that the bees danced to show their hive mates where flowers bloomed, and that even the smallest stream was part of a vast interconnected system. She discovered the power of gratitude appreciating the simple joys in life and understanding that true success was not measured by material wealth, but by the richness of one's experiences and relationships. To integrate her newfound wisdom into daily life, 
Kyle adopted several daily applications. One morning mindfulness routine. Every morning, Kyle sat quietly, focusing on her breathing and setting an intention for the day. This helped her start the day with clarity and purpose. Two, gratitude journal. Each evening, Kyle wrote down three things she was grateful for. Reflecting on these moments contributed to her overall well-being and happiness. Three, active compassion practice. Kyle performed one act of kindness daily, whether it was helping a fellow animal or offering a word of encouragement. This practice deepened her sense of connection and empathy. Four, weekly knowledge expansion. Kale dedicated 30 minutes each week to explore a new subject or skill, such as learning about different plants or understanding the weather patterns. This kept her mind sharp and curious. Five, reflection time. At the end of each day, Kyle spent 10 minutes reflecting on her thoughts and actions. She noted any patterns and considered adjustments to align more closely with her true self and higher purpose. When Kyle returned to Mr. G, she was no longer the same naive fox. She was wiser, more curious, and always eager to learn more. Mr. G welcomed her back with a proud smile. Kyle, you have begun to walk the path of wisdom. Remember, it is a journey that never truly ends. Keep seeking, keep questioning, and let your ignorance lead you to new heights of understanding. From that day forward, Kyle continued to grow in wisdom, always remembering the wise owl's words and the importance of embracing ignorance as the beginning of her magnificent journey. Moral of the story, recognize your ignorance and transform it into wisdom by continuously seeking knowledge and understanding. True wisdom comes from exploring the world deeply, questioning societal influences, embracing your unique talents, and being open to learning from every experience. Integrate this wisdom into your daily life through mindfulness, gratitude, compassion, and continuous learning. Chapter two, tools for conscious evolution. So I'm gonna stop there. We'll continue with chapter two next week, okay? So I know some of you are coming here uh, to join us because you're reacting, you know, and, and, and and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with reacting. You want a quick fix. You want, I need somebody to get rid of this pain. I need somebody to get rid of this distortion, this, this issue that I'm dealing with, right? And what can I do? What frequency can I do? Those are all subjective perspectives, right? Everything around you are instrumental tools to inspire and transform you. And so what we are trying to do now is no longer become reactive to you. You know, as, as an organization, Chi Life has a foundation that I'm part of, you know, and that's where my passion lies to inspire and to allow others to equip themselves with the necessary tools that when they go forward, they can inspire and transform the lives of their families and friends and communities. We're not doing that anymore. Everybody's so reactive that we're, we're losing our community. Uh, we're losing our families. We're losing you know, loved ones and so forth to so things that we can be inspired and empowered by to transform their lives. So you will be learning those those strategies and those techniques that you can implement, but you have to apply wisdom because we talked about this from number from the first the first day we met. Intention, intention is everything, but if you don't have control over your intention or know how to leverage your intention constructively, then you begin to see yourself manipulated in a, in, in a reflection of your reality where you feel like you don't have control of your reality. I'm a victim of that. We're all a victim of that. And so this is the tool that these are the downloads that I've received. Now I'm taking the same steps I'm asking you to take. Take actionable wisdom where you can apply these steps so that way you can take control back of your life, right? And so then the wellness and the health will come. I promise you. Uh, there are things that I've done. As I said, there have been thousands of people around the world. I've leveraged tools and healed them of multiple different diseases and illness and things like that. But it means nothing at the end of the day because some of them weren't truly inspired. They were just reactive. And uh, the mental aspect of it was something that was very difficult and challenging for me because the physical is easily healed. But what happens to the mind? The mind is not balanced. We have a lot of emotional distortions happening around the world. And this is what this is going to do. This, this workshop is going to help that mental state. Because remember what I said also at the beginning, the soul, the essence, the light conceives the reality because that is the essence of divinity itself, right? The mind retrieves reality and then the body perceives. We cannot make change within the perception of our reality. It's like changing the, you know, the actors on the screen. When you're watching a movie, it is done. You have to go to the program, which is in you. But you have to go through you. you know, some of you don't want to go through yourself. You're denying yourself. You're rejecting yourself. You must love yourself unconditionally because it begins and ends with you. Practice what it means to love unconditionally so the overflow 
and go to others as you can love them unconditionally. So I wanted to go through the book a little bit more in depth. So I'm going to share my screen. So again, we, in this chapter, we're talking about ignorance. And, and I think a lot of times people get in front of you and you perceive them as having wisdom. And I myself like wisdom, right? Forever learning, always coming to the understanding. The difference between me and most others that I've come to understand as gurus when I walked in the room is that when I'm walking to the room, I'm an aggressive learner. I'm trying to learn from everybody. I don't care who is in there. I don't care if it's a child. I don't care if it's an adult. I don't care if it's an animal. I don't care what is in there. I'm hungry to understand how the universe is conspiring to teach me in that space. A lot of times people want to see the individuals on the platform. Whoever is the famous, you know, whether it's the president, whether it's this politician, whether it's someone in leadership role, whether it's a pastor, it doesn't matter. We're always looking for somebody on top. And it develops an inferiority complex to yourself because it develops a superiority complex with them as well as an inferiority complex. And you begin to find yourself always seeking, how can I solve this problem? How can I solve that problem? That's a program. Now, once you develop that program, you're always going to be seeking somebody outside of yourself. And everybody outside yourself cannot give you the answer because that which is, which is in you is greater than that which is in the world. So always remember that. There's greatness in you. The whole entire universe is in you. You cannot reach the universe outside of you, but you can definitely reach it within you. So start with the ignorance component. Walk into every situation hoping to learn, right? Look at every technology with a, renew with a renewness, right? So don't judge. Don't come in uh, countering. Just come in with an open mind, an open heart, so you can see the potential. Right? And, and when you begin to do that, you begin to explore yourself on a deeper level. You begin to see all the things that you miss. I said this as well. I'm going to repeat it again. What you think you know, and that goes for me as well, is 0.0000000000 close to infinite percent of the truth you don't know the truth so the 99.99999 is all about exploration it's all about exploring and experiencing and sometimes we negate the 99.999 percent because we're gravitating to that 0.0001 percent and we make it our world and we begin to realize that we're not living our best life our best self right because we define ourselves through people places and things and ideas that limits us when we're so much more we'll be we'll be beyond comprehension so who is Kayao? Kayao is my daughter and she has inspired me. The reason Kayao has inspired me because there's a sense of innocence with her. I, I watch my daughter look at me with such aggressive attitude towards learning. She observed, she's observing my lips moving, every motion, every action she's trying to learn. That type of tenacious learning habits is something I wanna go back to. You know, NASA said the geniuses of the world of five and six year olds. I want to prove that. I want to prove it. How can I be more like five and six year olds in my mind as I explore the world, as I explore, transform my life? Because I'm seeing that and I'm seeing that tenacity to self direct to learning. No one is, te I'm not a teacher in a classroom on how to, I know, how to read or how to write or how to walk or how to do things. She's exploring that on her own and she's allowing the entire environment to teach her which is huge. And that's something I think we should be doing ourselves. We should never outgrow that, right? So Kyle is, is always curious, you know, as a fox. And the reason I'm using in animation, because I always I also want to be very careful that as these, with, these wisdom comes forward, no one comes knocking and says, well, you said this, you said that. When we're, for all intents and purposes, we're going to say it's an animated story, right? But it's inspiring, right? So Kyle's story, you know, is going to be addressing multiple different issues. And for those of you out there that's looking for health and wellness support, as Kyle mature, like chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, as we begin to enhance those other chapters, I do have 30 chapters. Those chapters are targeting specific health and wellness. One chapter, Kyle meets uh, someone with cancer. And so she's going through the motion with that. So Kyle meets someone else with, uh, that she's supporting that has uh, pain and suffering from pain. And she's able to go through uh, different strategies. And a lot of those strategies will be presented to you as, you know, as, a, as a member of our family so that way you can leverage that. Kayo is going to be using the energy technology in, in her story, how to deal with specific issues. But before we can get to that, let's first get to what is inside of you. Let's get to all of that stuff that is blocking you from being your best self. Okay. So Mr. G, I don't know who that guy is, but he seems to be pretty smart. Um, wise, that's what they say. I don't know who they are. But it's a wise, the wise owl represent the downloads, not me. 
doesn't represent me. It represents the wisdom and the download I've gathered from people, places, and things, especially my higher self. So when you when you look at me, don't look at me as someone who is giving you. It's, it's a pass through. Sometimes, and if you ever meet me in person or have a conversation with me, you will see I'm a conduit in a way where I allow the flow of information from one's higher self to go through me. A lot of people, when they meet me and we're having conversation, the wisdom that comes forward sometimes becomes personal. And after the conversation, sometimes I don't remember the details of those conversations and they're telling me how profound. And sometimes I had to record the conversation and I have to go back and study what I said. I said, who is that guy on that audio, right? So that's what happens when we go beyond our physical self, this limited, distorted version of ourselves. There's so much more, so much expansion to us that we limit. And so this is allowing me the opportunity to do that. So speaking to you, you're talking to Mr. Giatani, and sometimes you'll be talking to Josie, the ordinary guy that is just laid back and chill. And then other times you'll be talking to Mr. Mr. G that's beyond my understanding of things at times. So open yourself to that because I've seen the same thing even from kids that I have trained at, at a young age at five and six year olds have given me wisdom that is greatly inspiring. Okay. And recognizing ignorance. This is the beginning point. You cannot accept you until you accept you don't know nothing. So now you know something. I don't care who you are out there. Physicist, scientist, biologist, doctor. You know nothing. right? What you think you know, I don't care who you think you are. It's 0.0000000000001%. Because we can never really identify with all the truth. There's so much more. I always say this, that it's a story behind the story. And that is the missing part. A child comes to me, walks into, into a room, and he or she is emotionally disturbed, right? There's a story behind the story. I'll give you a quick example before I move on. Uh, kids fighting. Everybody's reacting to the kids fighting. And I walk into the into the in the space and I'm asking what's happening. Oh, they they're doing this, they need to be they need to be going to jail, they need to be arrested. And I said, why? And they said, because they're fighting, it's tearing up the school and blah, 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 blah. And I heard one of the child's mother comes in and begin to use profanity at the child. And one of the things she said that was profound, she said, we don't have any effing food at the house and you are out here making a God, blah, 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 food of me. And so I had to stop everybody and says, police officer was there. I said, everybody stop. Am I missing something or did I just hear? There is no food at the house to eat. If I was hungry, I'd be fighting all of you. That includes you, Mr. Police Officer or Mrs. Police Officer, because I'm hungry and I'm hangry, whatever you want to call it. Right? And so I said, let's look at the story behind the story. Right? And so what I did, I, I got my team together and we got some money uh, together and we went and bought groceries. When, we, when the person who was de designated to go to the house, when they got there, there was no food in these people's home. There was a whole group of people. And she said it was a pot of chili with 10% chili and 90% water. Yes, I'll be angry too. I, mean, I know what it means to starve. I know what it means to lose my faculties and control over myself when I'm starving. But yet we're reacting to the action, not what is happening, the story behind the story. And that whole story behind the story, I, I'm ignorant to it. I didn't know it. And even if I asked them and they told me that story, I still would be ignorant to the story. So I'm asking all of you out there, take control of your ignorance, embrace it, accept it, love it, because it allows you to explore deeper understanding of people, places, and things. And those young scholars, because they are scholars in my sight and they will always be scholars, once we did that, there was a level of gratitude and appreciation from them that they wanted to do better because someone saw them and loved them from where they were, not judge them and condemn them based on the actions and response to the story behind the story. So again, deeper understanding of situation requires you to come from a place of ignorance. And a lot of times within academia and other places, they give you check of boxes to define people. They, they bring curriculums and they bring all these different things that undermine the sanctity of a human existence, right? The variable of a human existence, right? No one follows a curriculum to raise a child. 
but yet we're always looking for a curriculum, a directive to, to guide us. And that's one of the biggest distortions that undermine the sanctity of our ability to be the best version. So deeper understanding requires you to let, let go of what you think you know, put it on the shelf, keep an open mind, keep an open heart, so that way you can help inspire within that situation. And continuously learning, forever learning, never truly coming to the understanding. This is a spark of the infinite aspect of yourself. One spark. You are here to reflect that one spark, the infinite other spark. So embrace the ignorance uh, of, and that spark exists, infinite other uh, existing within that spark. That one spark is infinite, as above, so below, so within, so it's out. So remember, embrace your ignorance. Your ignorance is not a judgment towards yourself uh, of incompetence or, or lack of abilities and skills. You are already powerful. You are powerful beyond comprehension. You came in here to have a subjective perspective. You came in here to fulfill a purpose in order to grow you and develop you to understand the aspect of you that is subjective, but yet one with all that is. Okay? And so that's where we want to start. Okay. So in, in, in the story, it talks about this, this river or uh, this flow of water that is coming in. Sometimes in life, we have this core dependency on people, places, and things, right? And, and we expect it because it's been happening, you know, whether it's family or friends, we, we have these sense of expectations and we expect those things to happen. And when it does not happen, we found we go into this in, into this victim mentality. You know, I'm now victimized because I'm used to this. Or, you know, I'm used to this lifestyle. I'm used to this type of uh, response from people. You know? And what you have to understand, there's a purpose in that response because if you weren't vibrating on that some level, on the inner level, it wouldn't have manifested into your life, right? So um, the impression of Kaya is that sense of blank canvas, walking daily with that sense of blank canvas. You know, waking up in the morning and saying, I know nothing. I'm opening my heart to everyone because this is what the universe of God expects me to do. God wants you to control the universe to what, the when, the where, the why, but the how is none of your business. How the universe conspired to transform you and, and, and move you is up to the universe. It's up to God. You cannot control that process. Stop trying to dictate the process. Just be in the moment because only thing that is real is the moment right now, this moment right now. And that's what we want. We want you to focus on. Focus on this moment because when you're in this moment, you're able to leverage uh, resources and tools around you because you create a deeper understanding of it, right? So all the places she, she began to travel, she began to open her heart to learning. Right? She started where, uh, you know, the deer, you know, typically there's a duality, you know, the fox, the deer, enemy but she, her hearts are open her heart is open so she explored that avenue right and that's the same thing sometimes your beginning journey is going to begin with the people you don't like the people you hate the people that all of your prejudice that you have come to understand as your truth may be the key to open the door to ex, you know, to expand you and and that's sometimes that's how the universe works you know, that which is your opposite, you have to face. You have to face the things and, and that sometimes you define as opposite to you. And so be open and loving and understanding to know that everybody, everything has the right to experience its purpose and its nature in, in this grand scheme of experience, right? Uh, and so going through challenges and learning and exploring this way, Kayo goes through and she, and, and she began to embrace her unique talent. You know, uh, for example, Terrence, you know, how often do you see societal influence? You know, the, the world wants you to be this way, act this way, behave this way. You know, you have to, you have to contribute to this group or that group. You have to be part of this group. If you're not this group, you know, look at all the, the distortions, you know, look at the wars. You either pick a side, you can't, you can't, you know, love both people. You got to pick a side, either them or you, or, and all these different things. And that's because it's, there's no deeper understanding of people, places, and things, right? And so um, Kyle is on this journey to go beyond herself. And so as the story continues, she goes into unknown parts. And that's what happens when you begin to expand yourself. You begin to go to places where you're uncomfortable, right? <laughs> uh, sometimes you'll get a new job and that job is very uncomfortable or you get into a new relationship and that relationship is going to really reflect a, a deeper version of you. You know, sometimes you might say, I am a loving person. 
I just love, love, love everybody. Oh my God, I woke up this morning loving. I love, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then you get with somebody that you are in love with that don't know how to love. And it is going to work your last nerve. And you're going to say, how can this be happening to me? I'm such a good person. Why is this happening to me? This person does not know how to love. That's because you said you are all loving. So now you are the embodiment of the wisdom to inspire them to become loving. You wanted the challenge. So whatever you define yourself to be, you got the opposite. That's what you can now practice. And that which you practice is the resistance. So every time you show love, you, you got resistance. You show love, you get resistant. You continue loving. And I'm, well, I'm, I'm burning out. Well, that's what we got the technology for, right? You can go back and re-equip yourself if you have no one around you. But you continue to push through and you're trusting the universe that you're doing a God, you're doing your part in contributing to that person uh, awakening to that the love of self, right? And so how does this start? You know, how do you get up in the morning to face a person that is the opposite of you? How to face a job that you can't stand being at? I mean, you're there for a purpose. I promise you, if you weren't there for a purpose, you wouldn't be there. Right. I've been places, uh, I worked at a school um, and the kids was tough. These were kids that were um, neglected, abandoned. These are some of the, you know, the most struggle of our, of our communities and these, these young scholars. And they push, they, were, they push the envelope of who I was. They challenge everything. And I had to learn to forgive and forget about every day when I came back. Can you imagine a, a scholar coming up to you and getting in your face and threatening you? And you have to look at them and say, I don't care what you think you are. I still love you. I don't care what you think I am. I still love you. And looking at them and just trying to be consistent with that. It, it was it was hard because when I get when I got home, I was drained. I was drained because it wasn't just one child. It was 30, 40, 50, I had almost 160 kids because I had combined a couple of classes together where I was mentoring another teacher. So I had all these kids and the more you pour love, the more they gravitate to it and the more they gravitate based on who they are. Kids will tell you how to love them unconditionally. And, and if you inspire them, they will transform to the best version of themselves. And that's what we have to be consistent. I had to come home and I had to re-equip myself because the next day, Man, I would I want to call home. I want to call him every day. Hey, I can't make it today. Why? Students can't make it today. Why? Students. But I couldn't do that because there's a purpose. And sometimes you don't see the end result and you continue to push through. You push through. And sometimes at that job that you feel like no one likes you, no one appreciates you, keep being you. Keep loving you. Keep showing up and just being the best version of you. Don't counter. Just continue need to be the light don't turn off the light because you say everybody is darkness let me just turn my light off and then we'll all just be in dark you know bumping into each other keep your light because somebody in there is watching your light and and i know that because i've had students call me after they have left the school and text me and say mr g you loved me even when i didn't love myself and because of that i've learned to love myself and that was huge. If I have impacted one human being, I've impacted the world. And so for me, that was enough. That whole year of struggling and frustrating, sometimes the divine will give one spark back to you so you can know that. And that person particularly was one of the person that was really, really off balance. But because of keeping my light, they were able to ignite theirs. And now they're being a light because she was telling me how she is trying to be the light for her friends, even at the high school going towards college. I'm grateful for that because now I say I have done something worthy of her and worthy of that community. So please keep doing because somebody in that, at that job, somebody at that space, somebody at that, you know, wherever you are, the business customers, whatever, somebody needs your light. And you have to find a way to keep your light lit. And that's why we're here. Give you tools and, and access to tools to keep your light lit and, and, and bright enough for others to see, right? So let's begin. What are some of the basic things we can do? Morning mindfulness. Get up in the morning, you know, just simply identify what is it that I would like to achieve today. You know? And so if yesterday was a stressful day, I'd like to have a peace of mind today, right? What can I do? Now I want everybody around me to stop acting up. 
That's what we, I wish all these heathens would stop, right? I wish all these devils out here would just stop being the devil. If they all stop being the devil, we all can be sanctified, right? <laughs> we can do that. That's not how it works. It begins and ends with you. So you have to go inside and say, what do I need to say to myself? And how do I need to define myself in order to be able to be the best version of myself to reflect that? And so what tools do I need? So being mindful. But some of us struggle being mindful. And so today we're going to look at what, what resources can we leverage to cheat or anything else that can help us become mindful, become fullness within the mind. Right? That's I mean. So that I means we understand and appreciate what the mind is, and understand the fullness of the mind, that the mind is the, the manifestation of creation, is where all creation exists, and I want to make sure I am uh, mindful of that nature of the mind, and be able to see what aspect of the mind do I want to experience. So 10 minutes, find that purpose. It can be something as small. Some people might be something as small as I would like to have something nice to eat today, you know, or I would like to treat myself to lunch today without feeling guilty. Just something simple and just move through and allow the universe to do it for you. Right? And then create uh, next is a reflective journal. Three things to be grateful for. I promise you, you have things around you. You have people around you to be grateful for. You know, uh, being ungrateful is it's an, acceptance, it's, it's an acceptance of your ignorance as wisdom. Uh, because you feel like I, I have somebody who texts me. He says, I'm lost. I have nothing else, you know, that inspires me. I care for and, you know, I'm, I'm done. Right. Because he's still reflecting outside of himself. He's been trying to allow the, the movie character to change. He's yelling at the movie character. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. And the characters in the movies are not reacting are responding to him, and so therefore he internalized that as a problem. So again, allow yourself space to be able to find things that to be so that way you can become grateful and reflect on things that's um, around you that you can appreciate because it creates an opportunity for you to start to change your vibration with regards to people, places, and things. Because when you focus your attention on something that you're grateful for and something that you appreciate, you begin to experience that connection of love to it, right? And then compassion practice. You must practice compassion, you know, uh, because we're all connected. Everything, every human being, every aspect of this planet is connected, right? And so you have to have compassion, kindness, because it says, as a famous saying, you all know the saying, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Not do unto others what they did to you. That is not the same. Some people have changed that saying. Is do unto others as you will have them do unto you. So the way you want to be treated, you keep treating them even when they're not treating you correctly. You keep doing it because you're practicing and practice leads to perfection. Okay. So the, the act of kindness, don't look for reward from the people, places or things that you're doing kind things for. Look for reward, expectation through the universe. If you can do that, you can set that because that's the purpose of the universe. I'm doing this stuff and, and I'm not expecting them to reflect that. However, I would like to feel good about this situation and I would like to see, you know, uh, impact of it. And the universe will conspire or God will conspire, whatever you want to call your higher self. Again, I'm trying to be more objective here than subjective how you define something greater than you. Uh, but whatever you expand your mind to understanding greater than you, tap into that force that is beyond you so it can see perspective of reality that you cannot see. Right? So explore um, that, that depth of kindness, practice kindness. And whether it's just speech, whether it's just giving positive words, uh, whether it's compliments, and they don't have to be material things. It can just be thoughts can be thoughts you can be at home and just say you know something mary sue today was acting a fool at this job she was oh she's crazy right but rather than reflecting on that you can say i don't know the story behind the story as it relates to mary maybe mary is going through let me send her some positive love because remember we're all connected even when we're not together and when you get to chapter seven we'll talk about the quantum aspect quantum mechanic have proven that right now right quantum mechanics has proven that everything is connected even at a vast distance and so even though you're not with them you're not in front of them you're not speaking to them you're still connected to them so the, the silent thoughts in your you know in your home or the thoughts in your home when you're by yourself does impact people's lives so you have to be careful that you are projecting energy into them and that energy sometimes comes in there and then they come back and respond in kind 
based on that energy that you had at home because you thought you weren't in front of them. So don't be a hypocrite. Be genuine. Be loving. Be compassionate. Okay? Dedicate some time to explore. You know, learning keeps your mind sharp to keep learning because forever learning, never coming to understand. So always open opportunity to learn. Learn something that challenges you, that contradicts your belief system. When, when, when I was exploring, for me, I went through a challenge for nine months, religious. I was, uh, was trying to explore the depth of my spiritual understanding. And it was intense for me, nine months of depression, because I couldn't let go of the truth that I was holding to. And once I finally let it go, everything just became beautiful because God became a different representation to me, or the universe became a different representation to me in a way that now everything made sense for the first time. All right? Uh, so... We'll fast forward um, to transform ignorance into wisdom, embrace continual seeking knowledge and understanding, embrace unique talents, your, your, especially yours and the talents of others uh, through every experience. Be grateful for the talents around you. Don't, don't be envious and jealous of those talents, right? Because again, you're healing you, right? You're healing you so you can continue to be the light. Integrate the wisdom into your daily life. What have you learned through the experience of others, through the experience of yourself? and through the experience of things, you know, and open your mind to continuous learning. Uh, true wisdom comes from exploring the world deeply, and not looking at the surface and making judgment call on the surface because of what someone said, but really exploring the depth of what could be happening behind the scene. As I said, the story behind the story. And don't allow societal influence to, to dictate how you perceive people, places, and things. We got to really heal from that as, the, as a community. Right? Practice gratitude. Gratitude is an amazing attitude, you know. Gratitude with mindfulness and continuous learning, that is the beginning step. And if you begin to apply that daily, you'll begin to see the manifestation of the things you desire. It's just like you know, treating an illness. A lot of people want to react to, the, to treat the symptoms, but there could be an underlying condition that you haven't even thought about, right? But if you treat the body with the right nutrients and food, the body knows what to do with it. It's the same thing with the universe. The universe knows what to do when you practice gratitude, when you practice mindfulness and practice continuous learning. It knows how to align with you to give you all the things that you desire, which is like this ultimate health. You'll get those healthy you know, uh, conditioning manifesting. All right, uh, let's see. Next, uh, Kyle's growth. So final thoughts, embrace the journey as a lifelong learning process, uh, let go um, of the idea that ignorance is a fault. Ignorance is the beginning point and sometimes end up being the end point because you're forever learning uh, to explore a depth of understanding as it relates to your, to your life. Right? So here is, we're gonna go ahead and jump to the chi core frequency. So we wanna be mindful. So this is Kyle trying to be mindful, practicing mindful. All of us don't have access to a streaming, a beautiful, uh, serene <laughs> area and community like that at quiet. We don't have that, right? But we do have the chi cord. We do have the chi cord technology that allows us to take that environment and put it in us, right? And so we're going to be looking a little bit about uh, how to do that. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop here and go online real quick and share the screen online. So we can see what frequency, if I wanted to run mindful frequency, what frequency should I be running? So let's go ahead and look. And then I will be open to questions. So this is the website. We talked about this website last week. This is the online portal for your frequencies. The basic frequencies are there. Um, you go to members.chicoil.com and they have the starter package and they have different packages. So for me, I have a playlist tablets behind me i go and create a playlist if i'm looking for wisdom i will click wisdom and then i will see what resonates with me if there's spiritual wisdom i'm trying to seek i will click on that uh let's say i want success there's wisdom in there but i want to build some character right and so i will click it and there's a description here and i'm going to take some notes and see Okay, what aspect of this frequency is going to help me cultivate what is rare in, in today's world? What does that mean? Um, trying to explore the uniqueness of the world that that, that matters most, right? Uh, character, invoke um, spirit and resolve, a fearless determination, 
uh, not just an inspiring indomitable spirit, but um, a fearless determination, care, and understanding of others. So I'm looking, I'm scanning here, I'm looking for things that I think I do want to care for others. I do want to understand others. I do want a willingness to listen. I do want a physical and mental, emotional toughness. I want that. And also I, I'm, I'm adding this to my playlist. So I'm going to go ahead and just add that to my playlist. And I'm going to go ahead and create a mental state. And I have a mental state and I'm adding that to that. Okay, that's my first frequency. So now I'm going to look at some other frequencies. I will go back and see are there any others that can support that that journey of mine. So I'll go in there again and I'll look for another, uh, somebody else. I want creativity. I want to be more creative in my experiences, right? So I look at creativity. I scan through it, okay? Ah, solutions to difficult problems. Ah, I'm having a lot of distortions. I want to be able to help with that. Let me go ahead and run this because it's going to help me a lot on how to navigate through the situation. I know get clearer intuition and, and, and that gut feeling, and, you know, to be able to feel what is right and versus what is not the right path for you is something that you want to develop. Then you want to add that to your playlist. So I'll go ahead and add that to my playlist again, add that to my mental state. And I will continue to add those. And then what I would do is just play it, you know, um, and allow that environment to condition you know, me in a way where I feel like I'm being recharged for those specific things, right? And somebody might say, well, I want to expand my wisdom as it relates to my business and opportunities there. So I look at success. Uh, it's all about opportunity for success, gain wisdom to discern crucial decisions. So that way I want to make sure I'm impactful in my business. For me, it's never been making it more about business success as it being to inspire the human construct. Right. For me, that's been always my journey, how to inspire the lives of others so they can see the best version of themselves. And I, I'm seeing that with you know with abundance. I'm seeing that with great success. So it was working for me based on my purpose. Your purpose might be a little bit different, right? Somebody might say, Mr. G, that sounds good, but I feel broke, busted, and disgusted. I want to try something different. So I want to do more. I want to focus more about money and success because I believe that it's going to bring me the necessary happiness. And what I would say in response to that, you need to heal, right? However, there's one here that, that might be attractive as one that says wellness, wealth, and wisdom, right? So I might combine it because I still want the wisdom, but I also want the wellness, I want the wealth. So I want to resonate with peak performance. I try good wellness, you know, I want to be healthy. Uh, I want definitely a life of wealth. And, you know, what is wealth? It's the abundance to be able to, you know, do the things that I want to do when I want to do it. That is the, the understanding of true wealth. And you're free to do what you want to do when you want to do without any negative distortions or consequences. And the wisdom for success, uh, get good karma, uh, get good reflection. That's what karma means. I want positive reflection, experience positive surprises and coincidences. I call that synchronicity. I want to see synchronistic you know, experiences around me that inspires me to be you know, a better version of myself. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and I'm going to open up for questions. All right. Just want to get you guys to see how you can now navigate the process. So as we're exploring ignorance, now we can start navigating into the depth of wisdom and synchronicity will bring people, places, and things to you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and if you have any questions you want to jump in, go ahead, Bill. I see Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah. Hi. Um, listen. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, awesome. Nice to nice to hear you. You're, I mean, very good. Very good. Uh, listen, but I I noticed that you were. I don't know if those were all pre set up, but I didn't get where you were finding those frequencies. Like you said, okay, I want to do wisdom. I didn't okay. see you search for wisdom, or I want to get success, or that. So I wasn't sure where those frequencies were coming from, and that's been a big problem with mine of finding. Like you made it seem so simple, but there was some. There must have been something in between. It is. It's a search bar on the top. I hit search. You you hit. But what you did? You type in wisdom. Yes, I did. That's all I did. And were you doing the rife or everything? So uh, let me share my screen once more, and then I'll come back. All right, good. So Thanks. let me know. Okay, uh, let me hit. Let me go hit back. So this is the default screen. If it, at the very top it says search, right? No, you see that? hang on. No, I do not see search. Okay, on a very not on your screen. Point to it. Oh, there it. Is. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. yeah. It's over on that. Now, side. if once I type that, notice on the left, I do see rife. You see spiritual wisdom. Yes. Those are the frequency rife. So I would click the rife frequency and rife. And there's several rife frequency about spiritual wisdom when right. you begin to search. So that is there, but also Davis quantum frequency. 
because he's at the bottom as, as well. So these are these albums that actually all resonate. So wisdom comes in multiple different ways to, to be applied to you, right? Whether it's through your third eye chakra, right? Or yeah. your crown chakra, throat chakra. So you can see, as we talked about previously with, with, with Richard, how looking at those chakras as an int as intricate part of your, your healing, your transformation is critical, right? And then right. meditating, how to meditate. So most of us may not have the capacity to meditate because sitting still, and being able to be neutral of your thoughts can be very difficult. So you want to run the meditative frequency so that way it helps you stay balanced because meditation is to return you back to zero because zero has no duality and allowing that everything comes and goes. And then that's the state of meditation. You know, meditation. And, and that's why we look at breath. Most of the time people ask, why am I looking at breathing? I'm tired of looking at breathing. You have to look at breath because breath is this, is this pattern of looking at what comes cannot be held what goals cannot be controlled, right? You cannot, you do not hold the breath when the breath comes in and says, okay, I'm just gonna hold this breath because I don't know if some more is coming, right? You can't do that. Or when I release this breath, I don't have no sense of guilt. That unconscious mentality is what meditation wants to teach you. Understand the flow of life and death because every every time you inhale, life is happening. Cells are generating, different things are happening. Your body is becoming oxygenated, right? And when you release, there's something, there's death happening, the idea of death, which is it's not really in a negative way, but positive and negative is happening. You know, It's just like a charge on the battery. You have positive and negative. It has no real definition to it. So when you run the meditative state, it helps you get into that state of neutrality to the best of your ability. You know, now there's a lot of belief system that you have to unpeel away and those thoughts are gonna come in. I would say just learn to accept them and let them come and flow out. I usually recommend have a white canvas in your mind, right? So anytime the thought comes in, throw it on the white canvas and allow it, allow it to dissolve. But the more you focus on the white canvas mentally, there's something about the white canvas because it's an aspect of creation that allows everything else to dissipate just a clear white canvas right and because that is your platform for creation and so what you want it to be is nothing on there so when thoughts come in go back to that space and that will help you get into this in a mindset but again these are the frequencies as you can see that are listed for just wisdom there are more and and, and it describes them when you click on it right click on each one you can see the description will be to the left and that way you will understand a little bit, you know, some are not described on the right. It's not fully described on here, but it is described on the tablet. And I believe it's described on the actual website where you purchase them. Yeah. So yeah. I would say this is, did that, did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. And one more thing though, I've noticed with some, um, since I've got you, I might as well ask you some questions. <laughs> I noticed with some frequency, they'll, you'll go, and I can't give you an example right now, but you'll go there and you'll say, Okay, well, this, it'll be 100%, 50%, 10%, or something like that, different strength. Mm -hmm. I'm, and it's, it, it, you know, it's in a playlist where you can go. Is it recommended to go through all of those or just pick one? Like, for example, sleep. If you go to sleep, mm -hmm. it starts with uh, uh, something, but then the, I think the bottom three are a percentage of the, of the middle one or something mm -hmm. like that. So do you just rotate them all or pick one so i i usually put them I, I want them holistically all of them because when anyone creates something there's a totality of that creation that they're manifesting for you right so mm -hmm. there's a purpose in that so when i look at things i don't look at all the technical aspect anymore because there's so much on the technical aspect because remember i'm operating from uh, from ignorance right and i don't want to focus so much on everything out there because it's I'm 99.9999% I'm ignorant right so mm -hmm. I have to find ways to define things that resonate with me right so when I type in wisdom I'm not going into the technical anymore I'm going into the experience so I will hit the entire playlist but I sometimes will do random right because I I, I believe in synchronicity so I will hit um where, where it has random play where, where it can pick anyone at any given time and I will do that okay oh or you do random play straight yeah. Okay. I haven't done anything with random yet. That's, that's, that's good advice. Yeah. And because sometimes when you do that, you are, you're giving, remember that free will, that how <laughs> you're not saying, okay, this is going to be first. This is going to be second. This, even though it was created in that way, it doesn't mean that's how it synchronizes with you. So I try to say, this is my way of trusting the divine universe. So even when I put a playlist together, I put random on 
because I don't want it to go in that sequence because sometimes I might start at the beginning and then all of a sudden I have to leave or distract it and I, I, I don't continue. So when I put him in random, whatever is playing at that time is what I meant to be experiencing. And so uh, I leave it that without the judgment of anything else. <clears throat> okay. Got time for another question? Uh, sure. Then, yes. I would give go, one, go ahead. More. one more. Okay. I know that you have had a lot of experience with the uh, learning, uh, the autism, the uh, um, spectrum uh, kids, things like that. And I just happened to be going through and showing some somebody else the, the thing today. And I found two different programs. One was called Learning Breakthrough Bundle. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking at that, like there is a ton of frequencies on this. And it looks like there are inside of this. I mean, it starts way up at uh, Academic Achiever. And then it goes way down. And you get to Autism 1. And Autism 1 goes all the way through to Autism 34. And then it goes attention deficit disorder one all the way through, and I won't. I'll, I'll stop talking in a minute. All the way through to thirty one, and then autistic disorder again. Yes. So I'm wondering, was that this program is not really designed to just go from one to the end? I don't think. Uh, is that was a? It shouldn't those have been broken out into separate um, frequencies? So again, I do the same thing. So whenever I work with kids. There's so much more than just allowing the frequency. Remember the frequency, and, and I want to make sure I, I clear this up, Bill. Right? Yeah. The frequency is information that is placed in your information field. I need you to understand that, okay? Every, mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to where it go, on a quantum level, it goes into your information field. Right? There is no attachment to it. You can play it all day long. It's just in your information field. The attachment comes when the intention is there. A lot of times students don't have the intention to understand that they have autism. Sometimes kids with autism are some of the most beautiful human beings to teach you love, compassion, patience, and all, the, all these different things, right? right? So when I run the frequency, I run the frequency holistic, I put it into the information field, and I begin to guide the intention. And I begin to guide the intention with being gifted and being talented. Because if the information is already in the information field, then if they start to accept that they're gifted and talented, they're going to pull that information into their oneness to, to manifest into their reality. This is how I've been instructed, you know, higher self, whatever you want to call it, to do it with these students. So I will run all of the frequency, all random, and make sure it saturates the kids. So I run it in the background. And then you know, when it comes down to it, I said, do you understand your greatness destined for great things? Do you know how amazing you are? Do you know how gifted you are? And so it will pull that. I never said, do you know you have autism, right? I never do that. So the frequency itself has intention behind it. The intention is let's get rid of this idea of the autism, but you don't get rid of autism. autism I have autism. You know, I have intellectual disability. And, and the reasons I have it because it's ex it allowed me to explore other aspects of myself. So right. having autism allows me to explore a deeper level of, you know, love and compassion and, and positivity where other struggles with that way it comes natural for me. So I don't want to get rid of that. And so I allow my information field to feed whatever my intention is in that morning. So for young kids, you give, you share the intention with them, get them to start feeling positive about themselves. And you speak that, do you, I love how amazing you sit still, even though they're all over the place. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't say that. I love, and then they begin to say, oh, I do know how to sit still. And then you'll find them sitting still. And, and that's where you yourself, your intention has to be there as well, because your intention is not to fix them. Your intention will give them the tools to allow them to be the best version of themselves, because we don't know the purpose of their mind. We don't know the purpose of their soul, nor do we know the purpose of their physical construct. There's a significant purpose in all aspects of them. And so I try to respect that and just pour love into them in that way. Yeah, cool. Okay, so just to go through on the one before that, there is one that's just for autism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter. I could play either one of those as long. I as create an entire playlist of all of them. Yeah, but but there I is also them. there is all one just before that. There's one just says autism breakthrough calm and balance. Yeah. That's different. It's only got seven things in it, but that's specifically for autism. Okay, that. Okay, so, so Bill, look at it as going to the store. If you walk into Walmart, you're not going to get everything out of Walmart, right? Or if you go to uh, target you're not going to get everything out the store you're going there for whatever you need at the store but right. there's so much other stuff in the store so even though it says autism and it has all these different things it doesn't mean you need all those elements that's why i said let's trust 
you know, God to make up the difference or the universe to make up the difference or source, whatever you want to call it to make up the difference because the how, the integration of the how is what is is, is important, you know, that allows the manifestation. So you, you if whatever resonates to you, you just put it into a playlist. And Allow that it? playlist to just go and then you forget about it. Right. And that's the same <laughs> thing. I was also, have you ever sat down with somebody who said, I want to try this? And and you had a, a, a system with you and you said, okay, turn it on. What frequency would you give them? Okay. Calm, because you have, have to, when I start with the kids, I always start with the calm. Yeah. Because I, the calm helps zero them out and neutralize them, right? Yeah. And so I always go to the calm. Sometimes I'll run the calms for days before I do anything else. I'm not trying to fix no one. I'm trying to get you to calm because if I can get you to calm, then I'll get you to see me. And if you can see me, then maybe I can give you some inspiration to inspire yourself, right? So that calmness is key because they're reactive and we got to get beyond the reaction. And so autism is calm and focus, calm and focus. So I call it comprehending, process, and reflecting. I need them to be able to comprehend, which is concentrate, right? And I need them to be able to process quickly, process the information I've given them and be able to reflect. That reflection part is where it's key. It's hard to re really determine if they're reflecting. So you want to create an environment that is conducive for allowing students to reflect or allowing adults to reflect because it's where creation begins to manifest. Because when you reflect, you go inward to your programming, to the programmer, yeah. right? And when you go inward to the program, you say, okay, this is what I'm resonating with because I'm reflecting on it. And then it comes back. But what is happening, we're doing all this stuff outside. But when it's time to reflect, we're reflecting on nonsense stuff that doesn't serve us, right? Because we're busy, our mind is cluttered. We haven't had a chance to, to declutter the mind. So it's always important that when we go inside, when you go inside, you have to go inside for transformation because that's where transformation begins and ends. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump. Richard, are you there? Go ahead. Wanna... <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I appreciate you. Thanks for all the questions. All I right. wanted to make sure my co-host was here. I know... We were pushing the envelope a little bit. I want to make sure he's here. This this has been a huge inspiration, but Richard has been a, such an inspiration for me. Uh, we bounce things off each other. Je I know just met Richard a few weeks ago. And he's like an uncle. We we all we collaborating, and he allows me to do a lot of reflection. So, how you feeling today, sir? Um, well, I did notice that when you pick some of those frequencies, a lot of them were the higher quantum, which I don't have access to, and some of them probably don't either. Yeah. And, and, and that's where when we're going to talk to David to create a, um, a, a, a subscription where you can have access to those frequencies. Maybe you pay a monthly subscription so that yeah. way you have free reign to pick and choose. Um, yeah. But I know working with me closely, we try to make sure we can accommodate the individuals, especially if there's a right. significant purpose. Like, for example, Richard. Richard has a goal he's trying to set. So I want to make sure that Richard has availability to what he needs. And Rich has already invested already in the technology, uh, two of the technologies. So that way, so that now I know he's invested. So I'm going to invest back in him, whatever he needs to help accommodate him. And Richard knows I, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes because I'm yeah. one with him. <laughs> You're fantastic. Yeah, Jossie's amazing. He's totally supportive. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Richard's amazing. You know, his testimonials, guys, you know, this is a man that things that you take for granted, he has to battle every day. He has to battle the idea of breath every day. So Richard, you're a true inspiration to me every day to allow me to be grateful for what I have. And the simple thing is just getting up in the morning and inhaling and exhaling without struggling. Thank you for showing me that level of gratitude. So everybody out there, you got something to begin gratitude for, right? You, yeah. you can breathe without struggle and so be grateful for that you can eat you can drink you can do all those things that is a lot to be grateful for as well because others don't have those those things coming to them with ease richard is there anything you'd like to share before i don't know if anybody have any, any other questions but i would like to just end this with you um, um well, what like I would, yeah so in in summary that the presentation for me the presentation you did um about kyle was fantastic because you, you presented seven different strategies to employ every day to help get yourself aligned with your higher self. And if you engage in those strategies, anything from the daily meditation, the gratitude journal, the mindfulness, the active uh, compassion, all of these practices just reinforce exactly what we're trying to do here in terms of getting you in that love mode where you're 
expressing love. You're in your heart and you're not in your mind. That's absolutely. What I, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I think we have three questions. We'll, we'll answer these three questions and then we will continue next week to chapter two. Get the book and read the book and let the book speak to you. And this is not a, a kid's book. This is a book that speaks to every human being. We give us a common denominator. So let's go to Rick. Rick, go ahead. I think I've already, I think, go ahead, Rick. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. So, Bless you, um, Rick, how you doing? Oh, very good. Thanks. I, I, I love this. This is, this is just right up my alley. Um, <laughs> I got one, one question. Some of it's been answered already is on the, on the, on the man frequency, like it's got a, like a little playlist on it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's fantastic. I know the difference. I feel it. It's, it's wow. But now if I play a woman, now do I got to leave the room for the woman to get her, her thing? Is that going to affect me? Like <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. <laughs> frequency doesn't work like that. So frequency is, is the feminine and masculine. Right. And so mm -hmm. when I talk about woman, we are both. We have the masculine, we have the uh, and the feminine as part of us, right? And so sometimes you want to stay in the room because you know uh, I don't know how deep your voice go when a woman walks into the room and she does something you don't like her doing. You're like, hey, you know you you know you want to learn to be sensitive, you want to learn to be compassionate, you want to be loving and so forth. So allow yourself space to be able to experience that. And the same thing for women as well, because a lot of women are masking their femininity and they're out there trying to be dominant, and that is not a place. Women are infinitely more powerful in creation than men because they're the only one that understand oneness with another human being. We are seeking that as men. And that's what we're always striving to connect with a woman. So at the end of the day, it's all about balancing the masculine and the feminine. You know, nature will balance itself. If we have a society that's mostly dominant, nature will come and suppress that. You know, and when nature or balances that, we start to create judgments, you know, and, and we start to feel like, how is it for a man to feel like this, you know, he's a woman, right? Because the feminine nature needs to come out and, and, and let him know that I need you to experience this aspect of yourself now. And then why does a, a woman feel so masculine? Because that nature needs to come out. So this, this is always a balancing act. There's no judgment in it because you are both. And that's why we have to love each other because that gives us reflection to see. Maybe as a society, we need to see, we need to be more connected to our masculine and feminine nature. So run it, stay in there, love on your on, on your wife or others and just be in the, in the present moment with that. Okay, great. And one other quick little thing. So if I, if I listen to um, uh, like some heart chakras or like celestial, and then I, I didn't uh, shield myself Would would that if like you're because you're trying to shield yourself from the dark energy kind of a thing, um, like psychic attacks and stuff. I do anyways. I was wondering if I'm also eliminating the good coming in. Does it does it kind of offset that or or if so, I forgot to set a frequency? That's an excellent question. One of the, one I was one of the doubt one of the, the the distortions to that question is that you perceive light and darkness in a way that the physical world perceives it, right? When you begin to go into yourself on a higher level, there is no such thing as good and evil or dark and, and, and light. It's just you being the essence of the version of you that you'd like to be. So when you say shield yourself, that's a reactive process. Just be. Just be the best version you can be without the judgment of anything. See, you if you are light, darkness cannot consume you. I need you to understand that. If you yep. are light, darkness cannot consume you. So just run the frequency that aligns with you and let the rest go. Because when you begin to in tune with the frequency of blocking this and blocking that, you begin to vibrate with that. You begin to resonate with that. And you begin to reflect that. And you'll begin to see more of that distortion. So let that go and just, be, just seek after the things that serves you and focus on the frequency that serves you. Keep it, keep your mind going in that direction and then everything else will would neutralize because right. again if you're light darkness cannot exist where you are so don't exactly you don't, to, you don't have to condemn you don't have to do nothing to it just be okay okay great that that was curious that was a curious thing on on my part if i'm actually blocking the good thing in and and or how is it really reflecting on that you know, and if I if I didn't if I should have listened to one frequency first before I listen to this other frequency, and then I go back. Whoops! I should have listened to this one first. 
you know, if that was going to intertwine of not getting the full effect. Don't no judgment, just experience. Yeah. Just focus on yeah. the experience and let it go. Okay, right on. Thank you. Beautiful. Awesome. Uh, we have two more questions and then we'll go into have to call it a day. I appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, I have uh, James Gilmore. You're in the house. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. James, how you doing? I'm doing absolutely fabulous. The first thing I want to do is congratulate Richard. Uh, he went from when I joined the calls about three or four weeks ago to getting on the calls, being a little testy. And now he's a co-host and uh, sounding like a, a whole different person. So congratulations, Richard. Uh, congratulations to you, Josie, for working with him. And congratulations and thank you for having these Tuesday calls. They're uh, very inspirational, uh, very inspiring, very informative. And uh, I just love uh, being on them. And I've invited about three or four of the people to join us. Uh, Janine, uh, Luther Williams from Chicago, Janine from Chicago, uh, Saluna from San Diego. Uh, so uh, I'm just really happy to be on the calls. Um, someone was asking me, you know, if you, if you have the ascended masters and cosmic beings and archangels and your garden angels to work with, uh, why do you need all these uh, frequencies and Q coils and all that? And of course, I told them uh, I'll respond to your question. Uh, well, I did respond to them, but I said I'll respond further after the conference call is over. But uh, on their behalf and perhaps someone else who may have similar questions, that's my question, Josie. Okay. Well, I'll answer, the, I'll answer this last question. I do apologize if I don't get to you today, but please write down your question and I'll get to you next week. So to answer your question, ascend the masters on all these, I call expressions, I call distortion. There's all distortions. Remember, any aspect of reality are distortions, right? Uh, it's just a connection. There's no different than someone who says, my pastor, who says, my mother, my father, whoever, right? It's, it's a connection. Uh, every aspect of that is a version of you. Remember, there's only oneness. All is one. Right. And so when you look at the conduit of what represents your higher self, whether it can be a person, place or thing or idea, you're just connecting to that idea in order to find yourself. The goal is to find yourself. If you're not finding yourself because you're lost in those definitions, then you are lost. What is the difference between meditating on the ascendant masters? It doesn't matter who they are. There's several of them, but those are a higher version of yourself. You know, they cannot exist without you. You cannot exist without them. They're one with you, with, with you right? So what Chikwa does is says, if I believe in this principle of this higher master, whether it's abundance, wealth, success, health, whatever, how can I bridge me to it? That's the beginning point, okay? Everybody is neglecting them right now because they're so in tune. I'm focused on the higher master and I'm focused on this person, focus on that person. And when you watch their lives, their lives are miserable, right? They're sickly, they're, 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 un, you know, they're unhealthy. They don't have great relationship around them. They're broke, busting, and disgusting. You're asking, oh, you, you're looking out there, but how can you make out there and make a connection to you? And that's where the Chi Corps comes in. Chi Corps says, let me put the information as it relates to that, what is the information? Love, compassion, positivity, you know, mindfulness, all those things that they ascend the master that define themselves to be ascended based on those characteristics, I can start infusing myself with it. And that's what the purpose is. You ascend the master is no greater than you. I'm telling everybody out there, there is no ascend the master, there is no priest, there is no uh Anything out there that is greater than you because you're part of the one. To say anything is greater than you is to say that something that outside of you is greater than God because God exists within you and you are one with God. So nothing out there is greater than you. So I want to say that in closing, you are valid. You are important. Begin and ends with you. And then this technology is all about inspiring you to begin to find yourself, accept yourself, love yourself, and move away from this, the version of yourself that you're trying to transform you know, from to something else that is greater. But there's no judgment. That's why you have to find yourself because right now we allow judgment to keep us from really looking at ourselves uh, critically and objectively and lovingly. Love yourself, accept yourself, and then that will give you the space to be able to transform to the version of you. But nobody out there, nothing out there is going to do it unless you go within yourself. 
All right, so that was the last question. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully, I answered your question. James, if you want to elaborate yes, a little bit Yes, you that. did. Yes, you yeah. did. Just, just hit me up. We can continue that conversation offline. I love you guys. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, Richard, uh, for joining me. You look great. You look amazing. In, you know, in a couple of weeks, Richard's going to be up here with no oxygen tank. I'm speaking that because I know there's greatness in him. And when it's happening, Richard's going to be breathing like all of you. I, I know this. Now I believe Amen. I because every Amen. action has an equal and opposite reaction. Richard is coming. The, the Richard Virgin is coming. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You guys be blessed and amazing. Okay.